While mixing, I often use clippers to tame the peaks off my sound so I can push them louder than I would have otherwise been able to, while keeping the sound as similar to the original as possible. But sometimes I want to use clippers or saturators to actually change the tone and add harmonic content to a clean sound. Clippers are great for this, and I really like AU5 Austin's explanation when he says that saturators or clippers convert peak energy into harmonic energy. So you're trading the sound's amplitude for extra harmonics. But when I'm not trying to make a sound as loud as possible, but I still want to color the sound, how can I get the dynamics back after saturating? It's actually possible, but you need the right tools to do it, and luckily there's some great free plugins like Melda Audio's M Saturator that will help. So to set up the problem, here's an example with some drums. They're pretty clean, but I want to thicken them up. I'll use this free clipper plugin to squash it. Let's bring down the clipper's threshold and also boost the pregain up into the clipper. Now we have a saturated sound, but we've lost all dynamics, at least in terms of amplitude. This is where M Saturator or other similar tools come in. So the idea is that often when saturating sounds, it's good to use compression on a sound before the saturator to reduce its dynamic range on the way into the saturation. Compressing it beforehand gives a more stable saturation effect since the sound of saturation varies based on the input's level. But the real trick is that using this plugin, you can actually reverse that compression after the saturation step. So you can get the best of both worlds, the extra harmonics added by the saturator, as well as the original sound's volume envelope. So before I show you how to set up the M saturator to do this, I have an effect here on this effect rack. So here's the simple squashed saturator. And here's the M saturator effect. Notice how the M saturator effect is as thick and distorted as the simple clipper, but you can see how the dynamics have also been preserved in the amplitude. So to set this up from scratch, it's super easy. Load up an M saturator, then choose your style of distortion. Let's turn off the analog style because it can do some wonky stuff. And let's change it from soft to hard clipping by putting the threshold all the way up. The input and output knobs are the same as the gain and clip knobs on G-Clip. First, let's squash the sound like before. Then there's this compander section at the bottom. Compander means compression plus expander. This is what I was talking about earlier. When I enable it, it initially makes these drums sound a bit weird. The transients are gone and the drums kind of swell in. We need to tweak these settings until it sounds right. The swelling is coming from the attack setting, which needs to be all the way down for a percussive sound like this. The release setting doesn't need to be all the way down, but the lower you put it, the tighter it'll sound, and it'll closer match the volume envelope from the original sound coming into M Saturator. The lower you set the threshold knob, the more it will add dynamics to quieter sounds like the hi-hats, so I want it all the way down. And ratio is how hard the compressor and expander will work, so it's basically just a mix knob. And one last thing to note is that, according to the help page, because of the way the expander cancels out the compressor or something, this knob essentially just controls how much saturation gets applied. So I would actually leave the input and output knobs up top at zero and just twist the compander's output to add or remove saturation. From here, you can tweak the settings however you want. For example, you could change the saturation mode to a wave folder like this, and you could use the analog or harmonic section for extra control. So this got me thinking about how I could get the same effect in other ways. So I had the idea to build a similar thing in Bitwig's effects grid because it can do basically anything and also it's super fun. So I made my own compressor from scratch in the grid. It's a bit messy, but in the red, there's a threshold knob which works just like the threshold on any limiter or compressor. Then I'm using this logic gate to check if the sound is going above the threshold. And then down here, you can see how much it's going over. And when it is going over, this follower creates a volume envelope based on the rise and fall settings, which are basically the same as attack and decay on a compressor. And I'm making it do some math to flip the envelope upside down so it attenuates the sound. So when I turn up the compression amount knob, you can see it starts to reduce the peaks according to the compression envelope that we have. And then in purple, I made a saturation module, which is squashing the sound. Then finally, the magic is that we use the same compression envelope, but again, I'm doing some maths to flip it and expand the saturated signal, adding the dynamics back in. I'm not certain, but I think I actually messed up the math in here because of how decibels work logarithmically. But regardless, it's cool to build this from scratch, and the effect is pretty good. 
So then I just have two more examples to demonstrate this compander saturation. Here's a vocal, and it's pretty clean. Again, here's what it sounds like with simple clipping. But then when I add an M saturator with the compander set like before, it's just as thick and distorted, but we've retained the original dynamics. From here you have the option to leave it dynamic or dial in some custom compression. And here's an example with some saw pluck chords. First let's try some simple clipping. It completely kills the dynamics, it's just a sausage. But then I have this M saturator rack with some effects like a pre and post EQ, just for some extra control. It sounds just as gritty, but it's not squashed. So this is a great way to beef up your sounds without losing the dynamics, and there's probably more ways to do this, but M Saturator is free, so you should get it. And Bitwig is not free, but if you don't have it, what are you doing? Don't you know it's the best DAW of 2023? But anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.